To counter the dominance of the world's big three credit rating agencies, players from China, Russia, as well as the United States launched a new joint rating company in 2013. It aims to represent emerging markets and offer a different rating perspective. But reputation and trust are not built overnight. Join us this week as Martina Fuchs finds out whether Universal Credit Rating Group, or UCRG, will be able to break the monopoly of the U.S.-based rating giants and better assess the credit worthiness of the world's governments and corporations to prevent future crises. Only on CCTV News. Only on this talk. Credit rating agencies S&P, Moody's and Fitch were partly blamed for the 2008 global financial crisis. Accusations flew that their missed ratings even triggered the financial meltdown. Now the newly founded UCRG aims to rival the Western firms and speed up the long overdue reform process. How will it provide the necessary checks and balances and will it be able to reshape the global ratings industry? In June 2013, three independent credit rating agencies from China, the United States and Russia together launched the Universal Credit Rating Group with its headquarters in Hong Kong, a key financial center in Asia. The founding members of the group, Dagong Global Credit Rating, Egan Jones Ratings Company and Russ Rating aim to create a new international rating order. The goal was to challenge the dominance of the three U.S.-based heavyweights, Standard & Poor's, Moody's and Fitch and represent a different voice from the Asia-Pacific region. It invited well-known former politicians on its advisory council, chaired by ex-French Prime Minister Dominique de Villepin. With its ambitious plan, the group vows to reform the current international credit rating regime and achieve a balanced development of the global rating system by the year 2020. Analysts say that while UCRG is a viable competitor and will boost competition in the ratings universe, it will need time to establish its credibility. The dominance of the big three credit rating agencies, Standard & Poor's, Moody's & Fitch, is still absolute. How can a pan-Asian ratings agency challenge this? Well, because uh, all these three agencies are based in the northern countries, in the western countries, and, and in the U.S., uh, if Asia, which uh, has today the, the biggest uh, economic capacity in the world, 35% of the world uh, output. Uh, we have also the biggest reserves here in, in this region, $3,000 billion for uh, China, uh, $1,000 for Japan, $300 billion for, uh, for Taiwan. Though these do represent a very strong capacity. 60% of the billionaires of the world are here in Asia. So uh, if we take into account this new capacity of Asia, of course, having a, a, a strong uh, credit rating agency here in Asia would be something that will help all the deciders in this region, whether they are public or private uh, deciders. They might be interested in having a different view, another way uh, to look at the world's economy. And I believe this diversity, this difference of experience, it might enrich the, the debate. So getting more emerging markets on board of UCRG seems to be a top goal. Which countries uh, are you hoping to attract? Well, of course, now uh, the, the, the main objective is trying to create a new credit rating system for Asia. It has been uh, the goal that has set the, the Prime Minister of China, Prime Minister Li, uh, because I think it's important in this very region where most of the creditors are uh, to have an exemplary uh, system. And I believe this is something that uh, really can be achieved in not too long. Uh, Dagon has got uh, uh, a mandate to work on that, and I believe UCRG can also play quite a role in order to create the conditions of a better credit rating system. But I believe also also uh, towards Africa, towards South America, uh, UNISUR, uh, the organization of South American countries, are working in order to create a new type of credit rating system uh, in the Middle East also, because uh, uh, Islamic finance is not part of uh, the, the international world finance, so it's not as much as the, uh, it could or, or it would. And I believe by changing the credit rating system, we might have a possibility of integrating more and more these emerging markets. 
economic growth is more and more shifting towards Asia. How, in your view, can a pan-Asian credit rating agency contribute to economic development yes, in this region? Course. You see, uh, Asia is the growth model of the future. Asia is where the growth is, and I think there are good reasons for that, which we need not go into today. But it is clear that the outlook is robust. The outlook is uh, very, very um, sort of attractive for Asia. So these are the markets where people will have to invest. And if we have Asian rating agencies who are judged uh, in line with the global standard, that is very important. The standard can never be compromised, but it can be judged by anybody against the global standard. So you have the large rating agencies here from the rest of the world. They are welcome. You cannot have a monopoly. Competition is the best way to improve the standard. So if we have a rating agency here which does Asian companies, that gives them a critical mass and a base to then show to the whole world, you want to invest in Asia? You come and look at our rating process. It is transparent. It is close to the market. We are watching it all the time. And our track record is good. UCRG plans to come up with a new set of methodologies to rate uh, companies and sovereign debt uh, by 2020. So what exactly will they entail? UCRG的评级方法的设计理念 是要看一个债务人，他的偿债来源的可靠性，呃，以及偿债来源和他呃所负担债务之间的关系，呃，其实评级我研究了这么多年啊，呃，没有什么呃太复杂的，呃，它一个很简单的道理就是看你债务人你
banks collapse, and the big three ratings agencies have actually been criticized for their misratings and contributing to the financial crisis. I believe we have to take a certain number of steps. The first one is diversity. We can no longer have only a big rating agency coming from the Western world. We need to diversify. We need to represent more the emerging economies. We need credit rating agency coming from Asia, coming from Africa, South America, they need to be part of uh, the new system. And that's uh, w where the, the, the project of UCRG is quite innovative, because it's a project that uh, looks forward to federate uh, small agencies coming from everywhere in the world and uh, trying uh, also to advocate for a, a dual system, dual rating system, not just one rating which uh, uh, might be not enough to judge uh, the quality of an economy, to judge the quality of a company, but a dual rating, one local rating and one global rating, which is a better way to assess situation. If we look back uh, in, uh, uh, during the crisis of 2008, we've seen that uh, uh, countries like Pakistan have been very poorly rated. Uh, a certain number of companies and banks in Russia have been poorly rated, and they have gone through the financial crisis quite well. Uh, if we look at the economy of the world today, we see that there is a strong need for uh, resources, credit resources, in Africa, in South America, and there is not a direct uh, connection between the credit rating system and these regions. So we need to reallocate the resources where it's mainly needed. I will take another example. Small companies, small and medium-sized companies, they have a lot of difficulty in getting credit resources. So if we want these companies who are absolutely needed for growth, if we want to, to fulfill their needs, we need uh, to take into account their specificity. So whether we are talking about companies, whether we are talking about countries, Africa is going to be one of the major uh, sources of growth in the coming years. We need to respond to the need in terms of credit. And what kind of specific mechanisms should be put in place so that not the same mistakes that will be repeated again? Well, uh, I think uh, we need more regulation, uh, more banking regulation. We need also a different and more stable currency system. We see that uh, the privilege of the dollar is a privilege of the past. We should not depend as much as we do today on the dollar. Whenever uh, the, the, the economy of the U.S. is facing difficulties, well, all these difficulties, they have consequences everywhere. Remember the crisis of the debt selling uh, in the U.S. It had, had consequences everywhere. So we should try to work out new mechanism like for example of ba a basket of currency to be uh, the currency reserve for the world and I believe we are going step by step forward in that direction for example if you look at the convertibility of the yuan uh, there are a lot of promises that have been made uh, there are uh, new systems in Germany that accept the currency of the yuan just uh, during the visit of, of Prime Minister Li in, in London uh, there have been decisions also taking concerning the, 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 the pound and the yuan. So I believe we are having progressively new steps. And concerning credit rating agencies, I believe newcomers uh, can really change the spirit of the system, can uh, create more competition. If, they are no, if there is no competition, then there is no stability and no quality of the system. And also more regulation concerning uh, the credit rating system in order to be able to uh, monitor better uh, at a higher level uh, what uh, is going on and, and really track the problems all along the road. There is an urgent need to reform the international credit rating system. What are the main features that this new system should have? I think, uh, first of all, credit ratings have been around for a long time. But they have been the exclusive preserve of a few companies, which are private companies, not owned by any country, all based in the United States. And I think the time has come that we globalize this whole effort. Uh, we have to create an environment where nobody has a monopoly. We have to create an environment that there's transparency in the process. Everybody must know how ratings are done and how they should be managed. One of the problems which exposed them during the last financial crisis was that companies with high rating age, ratings, they failed. And uh, one of the things we discovered after details were gone into, that the issuer of the paper, 
the person who's borrowing pays the rating agency. So by definition, there's a conflict of interest, meaning you are issuing the paper, you want a good rating, and you go to a rating agency and say, please rate me, and uh, you will be get, getting paid for it. And these rating agency employees were getting bonuses based on how many companies they rate. So that, to many of us, was a conflict. Mm -hmm that at one side you are using this to generate income and how can you be objective? You can be, but there's a risk you may not be. So, so how can this conflict of interest be yeah. avoided in the future? This, this has to be avoided through transparency and through more professional professionalism. So it cannot be a monopoly. It has to be uh, uh, an open, transparent process. Plus, we don't have to have the issue of paying everything. Maybe the investor should also pay. That will make it much more balanced. Uh, we are not just saying that this is a north-south issue, this is a U.S. versus the rest of the world issue. That's not the way to look at it. The way to look at it, what have we learned from our experiences, what mistakes were made in the past financial crisis, where well-rated companies collapsed overnight. How, why did this happen? And how can we avoid it in future? So what kind of specific mechanisms need to be implemented to avoid that such mistakes happen again? Well, first of all, the process has to be transparent. The rating agency must explain what they are doing, how they have evaluated the company. And before even we go into that, one thing is very certain. You cannot abdicate your risk management process to a rating agency. You use them as a reference point. The person taking the risk has to do their own due diligence. They can look at rating reports. They can look at market reports. They can now, with the web, with the internet, you can go get so much data on any company, and then you can do your own analysis. That has to be the primary driver of this issue. But what was happening before is people didn't know the country or the company. They said, oh, this is AAA or AA, let's do it. And next day, it happened. Some com companies went from A to zero or to default, or from B or triple B to Z uh, default. It's because uh, the people who were evaluating the risk were doing it in a mechanical way and did not really have a good feel for the company. So risk evaluation is a continuous process. Once you rate, your, your work doesn't stop. You have to constantly monitor the company. So the procedures have to be changed, number one. Number two, this issue of payment by the issuer is a big conflict in the whole system. And number three, there has to be some regulatory oversight. Who is in charge of these rating agencies? Why are they just two or three? and only in the United States. The investors are all over the world. Issuers are all over the world. So we have to globalize this. It's not anything directed against one market or one country. But it is just to provide a level playing field to everybody, to evaluate risk better and more smartly, and to create an environment where intelligent decisions are made. And in risk, when you take risk, you will have losses. But if you can minimize them, it's better for everybody. A recent Standard & Poor's report says that the Chinese corporate bond market has overtaken the United States as the world's biggest, and that it is set to soak up a third of global company debt needs over the next five years. Although this suggests rising risks for the Chinese bond market, it also offers major opportunities for credit rating agencies, both from home as well as from abroad. China's leading Da Gong Global Credit Rating made headlines in 2011 when it cut the sovereign rating of the United States from A plus to A with negative outlook due to the U.S. debt ceiling impasse and the federal shutdown. But on its home turf, it faces the challenge of curbing the power of the big three. But despite the Da Gong-led effort to boost geographic representation and counterbalance the U.S. players, the competition with the Big Three is even felt on its home turf. Among the top four Chinese rating agencies, three of them are either partially invested by or in a partnership with the Big Three, controlling more than two-thirds of the overall market. What's more, homegrown firms are facing a lack of credibility, fierce competition, and weak profitability. How can these local rating agencies grab a bigger slice of the cake and have a greater say? How do you see the local credit rating industry in China? Compared to, obviously, to the U.S. or European market, I mean, the, the Chinese market is still relatively young. I mean, we've been only uh, started rating bonds probably in the last 25, 30 years. So it hasn't been around that long. Um, 
but it has grown tremendously over the last uh, five to ten years. Um, it started out with uh, the development of the short-term commercial paper, um, and then medium-term notes, and then you know there's a number of new products, and then also recently with the uh, pilots for the structured finance uh, issuance, mm -hmm. um, the market has grown tremendously. Um, I think one of, uh, there's, I forgot which research house, but one of the research houses project that uh, the U.S., I mean the China uh, bond market will probably exceed the, either the U.S. or the European market individually um, by the end of next year. So, I mean, I think the growth potential in China is tremendous. A Standard and Poor's report says that the Chinese corporate bond market has